hate all those, you guys. It is breaking news. Whoa! Whoa! That you can almost see breaking in the anchor's eyes. Yellowstone National Park is a mesmerizing geological marvel, enchanting us with its stunning scenery, lively ecosystems, and impressive geothermal attractions. However, amid the cherished beauty of the iconic park, something disturbing has surfaced. NASA just made an announcement of an unexpected crack deep within the renowned supervolcano, and that sparked concerns and questions about its origin. Could the same forces that shape this picturesque terrain potentially lead to a volcanic eruption? What are the current updates as we speak? Stay tuned to find out. Yellowstone National Park is known for its extraordinary geothermal characteristics, encompassing the famous Old Fateful Giza and dynamic hot springs. The Grand Canyon of Yellowstone boasts impressive waterfalls. At the same time, various wildlife such as bison, elk, wolves, and bald eagles traverse the park's expanse. Yellowstone presents an enthralling encounter with the natural world. The park has been in the news lately, but unfortunately, it's for the wrong reasons. Yellowstone has recently garnered widespread attention due to an unprecedented sequence of events that's raised alarms among scientists and observers. However, earthquakes happen fairly often in Yellowstone, making up about half of all the shaking in the Intermountain West area. But this recent series of events is making people worry more. They're talking again about the chance of a big earthquake in the National Park. This place has a lot of earthquakes every year, around 1,000 to 3,000. Most of them are small and people don't notice, but the recent earthquakes caught a lot of attention. Let's delve into the geological settings of Yellowstone National Park. To understand what's been happening lately and how serious the upcoming danger might be, it's important to know about the volcanoes and earthquakes in the area beforehand. Let's look at the history of Yellowstone National Park. This background helps us make sense of the recent chain of events and how they've been unfolding. Yellowstone National Park special for several reasons. It's the oldest and one of the biggest national parks in the US. It sits on 2 million acres of land, mostly across northern Wyoming. Still, it also reaches into southern Montana and eastern Idaho. What makes it unique is that it has the most hydrothermal features anywhere on Earth. March 1st, 1872 is a significant date because Yellowstone was established as the first national park in the United States. This meant the people could now visit and enjoy its incredible hydrothermal features and geological marvels. But a lesser known fact is that inside Yellowstone National Park, there's something called the Yellowstone Supervolcano. It's one of the biggest active volcanic systems on Earth and has a really interesting history stretching over millions of years. However, Supervolcanoes such as Yellowstone don't just appear by chance. An intricate process leads to their creation. Roughly 640,000 years ago, the last phase of these volcanic cycles took place. This impactful event substantially changed the region, completely altering its landscape. Amidst that eruption, the huge underground magma reservoir of the volcano collapsed, resulting in the formation of a colossal depression known as a caldera. The size of the Yellowstone caldera is truly astounding, measuring a remarkable 30 by 45 miles, which is much larger than what you typically find in most places around the world. Despite later volcanic activity gradually filling certain portions of the caldera, its force remains remarkably strong. Beneath the Yellowstone volcano lies a captivating geological feature called a mantle plume, often referred to as magma. This mantle plumes a very hot and molten rock column containing abundant heat energy. The magma plays a critical part in fueling the park's geothermal system. Fortunately, it doesn't reach the surface. Due to the abundant underground heat, Yellowstone accommodates well-known geysers such as the renowned Old Faithful, showcasing captivating geothermal phenomena. At certain intervals, these geysers erupt, propelling hot water and steam high into the air. This happens when superheated water trapped underground quickly boils and gathers enough pressure to forcefully shoot the water upward. Steamboat geyser holds significant fame within the National Park, 
and it's currently undergoing a rather intriguing change in its behavior. Previously, it used to erupt without warning, taking breaks that could last for days or even extend to 50 years at times. But things changed in March 2018. Since then, Steamboat Geezer's behavior has altered noticeably. It's been erupting much more often, sometimes even once a week. This sudden change caught the attention of scientists who are now carefully watching the situation. They want to see if there's a link between the new activity and a bigger volcanic eruption, even though it wasn't considered possible. The sudden changes make them worry that things might get really dangerous pretty fast, like in 2014. Let's discuss recent and old seismic activities in Yellowstone Park. Keeping an eye on earthquake activity in Yellowstone National Park is important due to its unique land features and risks of earthquakes. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory YVO, was founded in 2001 to oversee volcanic and seismic events within the Yellowstone region. They do this by putting seismometers in different places in the park. However, this gets tough in the winter when snow and ice can mess up the signals and make the seismometers stop working for a little while. In 2014, Yellowstone had a significant earthquake, measuring 4.8 on the Richter scale, which occurred over the weekend. The quake caused minimal damage and only a few visitors were in the park when it happened. Even though the earthquake briefly seemed to bring a sense of calm, scientists were cautious about dismissing it as a simple coincidence. What's even more concerning is that similar events have been witnessed. When these occurrences are ignored, the outcomes can be disastrous, and unfortunately by that time, there's little that can be done. One such occurrence took place roughly 8.7 million years ago in what would later become southern Idaho and northern Nevada. During this time, the grassland started to crack open, releasing torrents of lava and plumes of gas and ash that swept across the North American terrain. In a matter of hours, or even minutes, the area was filled with dark volcanic glass raining down from the sky, resulting in the demise of animals like rhinoceroses, camels, and horses that inhabited the region, as well as the destruction of plants. Eventually, the ground collapsed entirely. This event marked the most massive explosion ever seen from the supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park. A recent research paper published in Geology revealed proof of this super eruption. It calculated that it was about 30% bigger than the previous most massive eruption, which happened 2.1 million years ago. Both of these eruptions were tremendously huge. Supervolcanoes possess the power to devastate entire areas and release so much ash and gas into the atmosphere that they can change the climate. The eruption 2.1 million years ago is one of human history's largest volcanic events. It covered an area of 5,790 square miles with ash, reaching as far as Missouri. The volume of volcanic material expelled during this event is approximately 6,000 times greater than during the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington. Afterwards, the volcanic activity moved to a smaller zone within the Island Park region in eastern Idaho, situated just southwest of Yellowstone National Park. This shift led to another significant eruption, forming a large caldera 1.3 million years ago. Another caldera-forming eruption was the one that occurred 640,000 years ago, and it happened to be the last of them. The three instances of eruptions that form calderas were approximately 6,000, 700, and 2,500 times more massive than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington State on May 18, 1980. These three catastrophic events collectively released sufficient ash and lava to fill the Grand Canyon. In 2022, attention again focused on the monitoring data collected throughout the year. Notably, the Yellowstone region encountered 2,429 earthquakes during this period. Among these, a significant event was a magnitude 4.2 earthquake on May 11th the strongest since a magnitude 4.4 tremor in 2017. The year also saw substantial precipitation in Yellowstone, especially in mid-June, when an atmospheric river caused heavy rainfall on the remaining snowpack. Consequently, severe flooding ensued across the area, 
leading to the temporary closure of the entire park. Flood-related damage kept the north and northeast entrance roads inaccessible for the entire summer season. In 2022, the earthquake count remained relatively average, slightly lower than that of 2021. Notably, around 66% of these earthquakes formed clusters, occurring closely in space and time, commonly called swarms. The most remarkable swarm consisted of over 1,100 earthquakes, extending throughout the entire latter half of the year. The possibility of Yellowstone volcano erupting again throughout thousands to millions of years is quite probable. However, the likelihood of such an event occurring in the next few hundred years is rather remote. The most anticipated type of activity would involve lava flows similar to those that followed the previous major eruption. Lava would gradually spread over months and years, affording park officials ample opportunity to assess the situation and ensure public safety. However, there's no scientific indication suggesting an imminent occurrence of such a lava flow. During recent times, impressive changes in the ground shape have been recorded along the central line of the caldera, spanning from Old Faithful to White Lake in Pelican Valley. Surveys to monitor potential ground alterations commenced in 1975, involving measurements of benchmark movements in the terrain. By 1985, the surveys had recorded an extraordinary rise of over a meter across the entire caldera. Subsequent GPS measurements indicated that the caldera experienced a period of sinking until 2005, at which point it shifted back into a phase of significant uplift. The most significant vertical movement was recorded at the White Lake GPS station, positioned inside the caldera's eastern rim, where the uplift between 2004 and 2010 measured about 27 centimeters. This uplift was connected to the movement of deep hydrothermal fluids, or molten rock, into the shallow magma system beneath the surface at a depth of roughly 10 kilometers. This movement is thought to have caused the ground to rise. It's important to note that a caldera can undergo periods of uplift and sink for thousands of years without leading to a volcanic eruption. Also, in July 2023, researchers mapped the magma chamber underneath the Yellowstone supervolcano, uncovering its predominantly mush-like consistency and a larger volume of molten rock than initially thought. Despite this discovery, there are currently no indications of an imminent eruption. Scientists are actively observing ground movements for any signs of upward shifts, which might signal the onset of a potential mega-eruption. However, the recurring earthquakes alone do not necessarily imply an imminent volcanic eruption due to the refilling of underground magma reservoirs. What would be the ample effect of a sudden volcanic eruption in Yellowstone? The Yellowstone supervolcano is fortunately among the most closely monitored globally. The prevailing scientific view suggests that an imminent eruption is improbable. There'd likely be a substantial lead time, from weeks to months, possibly years before any forthcoming eruption at Yellowstone. Nevertheless, if a sudden major volcanic eruption similar to those creating craters were to happen at Yellowstone, its impacts would be felt across the entire planet. The eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would be an extraordinary and catastrophic event of monumental proportions. Unlike the typical volcanic eruptions seen in modern times, which are usually significant but confined in scope, a supervolcano eruption operates on an entirely different scale. The eruption would unleash massive volcanic material into the atmosphere, dwarfing even the most potent eruptions in documented history. The resulting eruption column could reach tens of kilometers, significantly surpassing the altitudes of usual volcanic eruptions. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991, acknowledged as one of the most potent volcanic eruptions of the 20th century, expelled about 10 cubic kilometers of material. However, the Yellowstone supervolcano's eruption would surpass this magnitude by several orders of magnitude. Primary concern arises from the fact that the repercussions of such a potent eruption would have a worldwide impact, as we mentioned before. This is due to the immense quantity of ash and volcanic particles that would disperse and block sunlight, preventing it from reaching the Earth's surface. 
Consequently, the planet would undergo a substantial decrease in global temperature, giving rise to what's termed a volcanic winter. This cooling impact might extend over several years as the ash particles stay suspended in the upper atmosphere, deflecting sunlight away. With diminished sunlight reaching the Earth's surface, the usual heating patterns would be disrupted, resulting in significant repercussions for ecosystems and agricultural output. Plants use sunlight to grow, but this process could slow down or stop due to the eruption. This would hurt plant growth, including important crops we need to eat. Farming areas around the world might produce less food or even none at all. This could lead to serious problems like insufficient food for many people. Hunger and malnutrition could affect millions globally, causing serious health issues. Additionally, the disruption in the food chain would create a ripple effect in nature, impacting not only plants but animals. The extended cooling caused by the volcanic winter would also cause shifts in weather patterns. Droughts and severe winters might occur more often and last much longer than previously experienced. The cooling caused by the volcanic ash cloud wouldn't just affect the area near the eruption. The widespread impacts would challenge the strength of societies and ecosystems worldwide. Although volcanic winters have occurred, the extent of cooling triggered by a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption would be unmatched in recent memory. The situation worsens because the global population is larger than ever. So, even if we were to lose, for instance, half our population, we'd still be talking about nearly 4 billion lives at stake. What's mind-boggling is that supervolcanoes don't just wreak havoc due to the intense heat and magma and ash fallout, they also reshape the Earth's overall landscape. When a Yellowstone supervolcano erupts, the massive energy and volcanic material release could lead to additional outcomes, such as the creation of tsunamis in nearby lakes. The seismic movements during the eruption and the sudden movement of huge amounts of volcanic material might set off landslides under the water, especially in the many lakes around Yellowstone. These underwater landslides would push a lot of water, creating strong waves that would spread out from where the landslide happened. As these waves move across the lake surface, they get stronger and faster, causing a tsunami. These tsunamis would have a major impact, especially on the communities living along the lake shores. The sudden and forceful rush of water could flood lower-lying regions, causing extensive damage to buildings and infrastructure. The strength of the waves could easily carry away anything in their way, posing a grave danger to people's lives and safety. Volcanic ash is composed of small, gritty particles made of rock and glass that can cause significant harm to aeroplane engines and other vital parts. If aircraft encounter this ash during flight, it can melt when it enters the extremely hot engine, creating a glassy material that might clog fuel nozzles and obstruct air passages. Additionally, the ash particles can wear away engine components, making them less effective and increasing the risk of engine failure. And that's not all. Volcanic ash can also harm the aeroplane structure, windows and sensors, impacting how it flies and how safe it is. To ensure the safety of passengers and crew, aviation authorities would promptly step in to secure the airspace where the ash cloud spreads. This involves stopping flights and shutting down airports to prevent aeroplanes from entering the dangerous zone. This applies not only to planes taking off but also those coming into the land. This implies that even tourists from other destinations would be at great risk should this event occur. If the Yellowstone Park supervolcano erupts, individuals may have to rely on their instincts and actions for survival. However, the series of rapid earthquakes that recently unfolded beneath this land, from the iconic eruptions of Old Faithful to the captivating diversity of wildlife, Yellowstone stands as a testament to the incredible beauty of our planet. This brings us to the end of this video. If this eruption happens, what would you do to survive at all costs? Leave your answers in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share if you enjoyed this video.